YouTube as it going, the Goat House is back in every single draft. There are surprise first round picks. In this video, we're going to try to find those potential candidates for this year's draft. Some more surprising than others. And then we have landing spots if they were to go in the first round. I'm excited about this video. It's one we do every single year. Love it. A bunch of draft content on our channel and more to come. We'll be live during day one of the NFL draft. Winners, losers, grades throughout the draft. So make sure you turn notifications on. Make sure you join us on Twitter as well. You know where I'm starting. If you've been listening to me go on you know, rants about Max Melton, you knew I was starting here. Huge Max Melton fan. Did a recent mock draft where I had him going in the first round. I had him going to the Packers, but like a lot of these landing spots for him, but... I think a lot of people like Max Melton. I just love him in the first round. Uh, you know, with the elite athleticism, the elite length, out, outside, inside, press off, man zone, versatility. Um, love his game. Love his upside. So th this is a guy that, you know, in this video, it's potential surprise round one pick. So not guaranteeing like all these guys or even any of them are going to go in the first round. But this is one. My money is on him going in the first round, which sounds really bold because no one is mocked besides me is mocking him in the first. It's just a feeling I have, you know, I kind of just just knowing what teams look for and, and looking at his potential upside. So I like Max Melton to go in round one. It, it's uh, it's bold, uh, but that that's what I'm feeling. Like the Packers for him, they would use him outside and inside. They're trying to run a little bit more man coverage so that fits. Seems like a Brad Holmes and Lions pick. Uh, they're looking for another corner. Nobody has drafted more of my favorite players in the draft each year than Brad Holmes. So that's a big reason they're on here. So um, the Niners, I think, would fit with them. That'd be a pretty good pick for, you know, they could be looking for another corner. Chiefs, good re possibility of uh, replace an option to replace Legereus Sneed. They look for guys that can press. Just hit my mic. Uh, that can press, play man, and are very athletic uh, there you go. Cardinals could see him in Jonathan Gannon's defense. I could see him playing inside or out. And same with the Steelers. Uh, the Steelers, I mean, pretty early, but, um, well, not really for me, but for everyone else probably. But they have actually met with Melton on multiple occasions, and sometimes that doesn't mean anything. But the Steelers are one of those teams that they typically draft guys they've met with, you know, a few times. Like, they've done their homework on those guys. So I thought I had the list of Steelers. Other wild card teams are the Eagles. Be a little early. Uh, the Bills, perhaps uh, those teams stood out as well. If the Vikings keep their pick at twenty three, but these are the teams that standing out, that are standing out the most. Um, for, for for Melton, quite a few of them met with them a few times. So interesting. Another corner. This is more of your true nickel corner, and that's Mikey Sainer still from Michigan, playmaking corner. You know, instinct of get his. Get his hands on. He gets his hands on the ball quite a bit. Um, so I'm trying to identify the teams, and we'll see the same teams kind of pop up in this video. Why? Because these are surprise round one picks. Most likely, if they were to go round one, they would go late probably. So some of the teams picking late are going to pop up a little bit more than the others. So it makes sense. Uh, but teams that maybe are looking for a nickel corner, um, you know, he's not going to be an outside corner in the NFL. Maybe he'll get some snaps there. Uh, Packers possibly could use a guy on the inside. I know they play uh, Nixon in the, in the in the slot a little bit. Niners could use an upgrade there as well. Uh, the Cardinals and the Steelers. So those are teams that – and he's going to be more of a zone guy, so I kind of look at maybe more so those next three teams. I'm kind of predicting the Packers want to run more man, but they'll probably mix it up a little bit. But, um, yeah, if we were to go first – I'd probably say the Niners are probably the team I'm watching the most, but I think Max Melton's more likely to go first than Sane Rastrill. They both can play in the slot, but Melton, I, I think, will be an outside corner mainly in the NFL. A lot of upside out there. I think he's, again, more likely. But this is one to watch out for. I heard teams really like him because he's a ball player. Gets his hands on the ball, playmaker, really instinctive. He can't really coach those things. So uh, another guy possibly to watch out for. Uh, and then we got another Michigan player who I love. I love Roman Wilson. Gonna another, gonna be another, gonna be another guy on my my guys list there. That was hard to spit out. Um, really good slot receiver. I mean, he's not super super flashy, so I think that's why people are sleeping on him a little bit. Uh, but he gets open and he catches the ball pretty damn consistently. Like he feels like he's pretty much always open, uh, and he catches the ball very well. I thought Max Melton had a really good game against him, but they had a good battle. Um, you know, Melton, they put Melton on him in the slot. 
because that's you know their best receiver. So that was fun. Uh, and the Ravens would think about him. Obviously, a consistent guy that gets open is something they need. I put the Chargers on here because I've I've played through this. I ran through this scenario in the past where, and it's a realistic scenario of the Chargers training with the Vikings and possibly acquiring. Um, you know, or do they something with the Cardinals? My last mock, I had a unique situation, but they ended up with the Vikings' twenty-third pick. Uh, you know, and could Jim Harbaugh take his guy, and they could be badly in need of a receiver there? I think it's a possibility. Uh, Chiefs could use another receiver uh, with the whole Rasheed Rice situation, cause, so I could see that with the last pick in the first round. And something about the Steelers, Arthur Smith's offense, they definitely need another receiver. Try to find a Deontay Johnson replacement. Um, this just feels like a Steelers type guy here. So those were the four teams. Like if, if there was going to be a surprise pick of Roman Wilson, the first, I wouldn't be totally against it. I like Roman Wilson. You know, you feel a little more comfortable with him in, in the early second, but I do like Wilson, like I said. So, uh, those are the teams to watch for. And that's a, mainly the purpose of the video is the player, the player to watch for, you know, don't let's not be completely shocked now because with, with some of these guys, there's some guys we're going to talk about that would be pretty shocking, but um, another receiver, Troy Franklin. This one's got a, it's got some potential. It really does because he was mocked in the first for a little bit there, but that kind of went away. Um, I guess after the combine and, you know, out of all like the solid receivers in the draft, he kind of led that group in drops, had nine drops. Um, he didn't face too much press when he did. It's like, uh, is he physical enough to beat the press, especially in the NFL, you know, so he gets open and he makes home run plays. He makes big splash explosive plays. He's really fast as well. You know, so he has some big positives, but some big negatives. So it's a it's a risky pick. It's a risky pick, really, no matter where you take him. Uh, but I think people are mixed on him. You either are in love with those positives and you really, really like him. So people have him as a, like a late first round player or people see those negatives and like those are a little alarming and they maybe have him as an early third round player I, I don't know if there's that much in between and maybe some people like him in the second but um you know so I think there's gonna be teams that would take him late first or they just wouldn't even take him in the second is what I'm saying so only have three teams here but I really like these teams for him like there's a decent shot these teams could make that surprise pick and take Troy Franklin Bills looking for that outside receiver with speed uh to kind of replace the Fon Diggs the Ravens are all they you know they have a specific type, you know. They they want to get guys that can that have speed and that can separate, uh, hit those home run plays. And the Chiefs, you know, similar situation. He's pretty similar to Hollywood Brown, though. So they may already have that role. It is a really good fit. I mean, to replace Marquez Valdez Scantley, you can argue that Hollywood Brown is that guy. Just outside speed, downfield receivers. They all fit that category. All of the above. Every player we just mentioned. So um, it is a good fit. Maybe they feel like, but again, only a one-year deal for Hollywood Brown. But those three teams seem like really good fits for Franklin because what they need, but what they look for as well. So that is a guy to watch. Again, pretty rangy. Late first, early third for Troy Franklin from Oregon. We, we will see. We'll see. Uh, uh, Marshawn Nealon's another one to watch. Like I definitely could see him sneaking in the first round. Out of the guys we've talked about, I think Max Melton's the most, so far, I think Max Melton's the most likely. I think it's a battle between Nealon and Franklin next. Um, but Nealon, there's a lot to like, you know, because this is a big physical pass rusher that's got some pretty good play on tape. But I, what he did at the combine was pretty, in the senior bowl in the combine, pretty impressive, especially, you know, those agility drills at the combine. Like he, those are pretty important drills, like the 20-yard shuttle and the three-cone for edge rushers, like history shows. And for how big he is, he was moving very well. He had elite, actually elite numbers in those categories. So a guy that can move like that, you know, you see a lot of upside. This is an upside guy here, um, and he's physical enough to help stop the run. A lot of upside getting after the quarterback. Eastern Michigan game was ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. So the Bills are a team that take, you know, they're not afraid to take that pass rusher, but specifically like they like physical guys on uh, off their edge. So Bills are a team, like if if Nealon, if you told me like Nealon went in the first, like if you saw the future, Nealon went in the first. Bills make a lot of sense. Ravens, it feels like a Jadeveon Clowney replacement here. So the Ravens. This would be tough, though, because the Ravens badly, and they, they need a pass rusher, but they, I mean, how desperate are they? they? They have some needs. How desperate are they for offensive linemen and receiver? So the Ravens, as good as they are, they have some major needs there. So, But a good clowny replacement. Uh, the Lions, you know, I think they would like the physicality off the edge for Neyland. 
uh, possibly like a poor man's Hutchinson at perhaps uh, the Niners, you know, could, could use another defensive end out there. I would like Darius Robinson a little more for them if we're, if we're comparing the two. Uh, and then the Cardinals, uh, Gannon's got more of those athletic speed guys off the edge. He needs some of those physical guys kind of like he had in, in Philly kind of had a mixture of the two, uh, you know, so that could be an option, but I really like the first couple there, the bills, the Ravens, maybe the lions, Maybe, you know, maybe all of them, any of them, but Bills and the Ravens really stood out. I think it would be a Bills move, and I think that fan base might lose their shit if one of those good receivers are on the, on the board there and they take Nealon. I You get a good player with a lot of upside and a good fit, but I, I, I could picture that fan base kind of losing a little bit. That's the category. Uh, you know, I, the Bills very well could try to find the Diggs replacement in this draft. Maybe they move up. Maybe one falls to them. But I also see a scenario where they actually pass for a defensive player. And, and some fans maybe be a little upset. But I can definitely see it. Uh, Nealon is definitely one to watch. Uh, yeah, I think Melton a little more likely. Uh, Nealon's probably next. Yeah, look at Troy Franklin as well. We talked about more guys to talk about. Patrick Paul, this would be a little more surprising, I think, if we had a meter. How surprising. I think it'd be a little bit more than the other ones, but man, I could see it. Um, there's surprise offense alignment all the time. That's one of the, I think offensive tackles in or offensive linemen and edge rushers usually have some surprising guys. Um, you know, last year was a linebacker and Campbell though. A couple other guys as well. Cole strange was a lineman a couple years ago. Um, you know, Peyton Turner was an edge rusher uh, that went. There's a lot of them, you know, that happened. But Patrick Paul, the reason I have him on here is because how teams value offensive tackles, but there is a lot to like about Patrick Paul with his experience, his freakish power, his freakish length. You know how everybody loves length. They love traits. Teams want the guys with traits. They don't want you can't coach traits, obviously. They want to coach the rest. He's got good play under his belt, but combining all that, like experience, the play, it's a little inconsistent to play. But it's a guy that I've been moving up my board a little bit recently. Um, the traits, ridiculous. The, the, the combination of power and length. Uh, so there are some wild things for Patrick Paul from Houston, you know, that teams might go, we gotta have this guy. And we're not, he's not gonna and these teams, they pick late. They pick late in the first round. They pick late in the second round. If they have a, when they have a pick, uh, you know. So if they have to absolutely have to have them, you know, take them late first, or they're going to trade back a little bit, perhaps. But Cowboys need a left tackle. It just feels like a, it feels like a this a Cowboys guy that possibly try to replace Tyrone Smith, which um, you know would be tough to do. But the Ravens need a tackle as well. Uh, they would probably be in the market moving him to right, but if Stanley goes down, putting him on the left. The Chiefs need a left tackle. They're going to love his power and length for sure. Um, try to replace, I know, from a couple years ago, but Orlando Brown Jr. Um, could definitely see that. And the Niners, you know, you'd probably be a backup right away from the Niners, so that's the knock on that, but he would battle uh, for that right tackle spot. But learning from Trent Williams and being that, I mean, that's a perfect situation and being that future left tackle is a possibility. But, uh, you know, I can see all four of these teams, why they're up there, but I really can see the Chiefs and the Cowboys. I really can see those teams. And the Cowboys, I thought Mozzie Smith was a surprising pick last year. Some people would disagree, but I had a late second, early third for Mozzie Smith. So that was, a you know, without like that flashy backfield production, like you usually teams don't take that type of player in the first. It's just that the value isn't there. So they actually surprised last year. Um, they surprised when they took Leighton Van Der Esch um, with his injury concern on how early they took him. So they're, they're a surprising team as well. Chiefs have had some surprising picks in the first two in the past. Everybody really has. But Cowboys and Chiefs, the more I talked about this one, I said this was very, very surprising compared to the other ones. The more I talk about it, the more I think it's you know I'm not, I'm not, it's it's under fifty percent of course but I watch out for this one people would be floored I think but hey we got to prepare ourselves here um, next we got a receiver Keon Coleman which uh, during the college football season not only was he mocked in the first but he was mocked fairly early in the first now it's like with all the other receivers and all the separation those receivers get and the lack of separation Keon Coleman gets I think he is a number he separated like a forty seven percent. 46 or 47 percent of man coverage reps which is pretty poor to be honest but he's a monster with the contested catches he's pretty athletic as well freaky looking dude with upside um but it, guys like Nikhil Harry scare me like got players like that uh Laquan Treadwell 
where they're monsters, they're studs, they got great hands, they got contested catch ability, they're strong after the catch, like they look pretty athletic, they just do not separate well, and they do not run all the routes as well at the NFL level, so I think teams are each year learning a little bit more and more, like that's the type of guy you, hey, we really like, but you don't take a chance on that in the first round, so that's kind of like dwindled down, like he's not going in the first, but there is a lot to like. There's a lot of wow to his game. There's a lot to like. It's a, you know, it's a uh, again a lot of upside here. Still, you kind of can work with those things. Try to get a more separation. But uh, I put the the Bills looking for an outside receiver. The Ravens. I think the Bills are a little more likely. Uh, I think a pretty damn good actually. Uh, Josh Reynolds replacement. Uh, for the Lions, I think you try to replace that in the second round, perhaps. Uh, and something, you know, something about Jerry Jones, the Cowboys, I kind of can see it. But I actually may, if, if he were to, I don't think he goes in the first. I think this is one of the least likely ones that I've, I actually think Patrick Paul might be a little more likely. Um, people will disagree, but, and I could be wrong, but um, I don't think really either go. But uh, if it were to happen, I think Bills and the Lions may be my second choice. But um, Bills will be looking for more separation, more speed. But they have that with Curtis Samuel and Khalil Shakir. So kind of get a guy like this, it could make some sense. Um, so that's where I'm at with Keon Coleman. Another one, Xavier Leggett, which I think people are a little bit all over the place with him. Um, I think you people either, I don't know if really anybody has him as a first-round player, but people either really, really love him early second um, because you kind of people compare him to A.J. Brown. Like if you're all on board with the full-on A.J. Brown comparison, you probably have him in the first actually because that's one of the best receivers in football. Um, and A.J. Brown, we had a high first-round grade on him. He was a steal for the Titans who they, in the second, which they end up giving away. Um, besides the point, different different topic. Um, when teams do dumb things, it really drives me nuts, though. Uh, but, yeah, I think people either like him like early second or they're going to say, yeah, maybe he doesn't separate as much and he was a one-year wonder. Um, you know, and you kind of have to sometimes scheme things up for him, but he's a good contested catcher, good jump ball guy. He's so fun after the catch. Um, he's just There's so much wow. There's so much to like. He's got freak athleticism. Go up and catch the ball, like I said. So I, I think there's a lot to like, a lot more to like than maybe than Keon Coleman or maybe even Troy Franklin. Um, you know, so I'm going to be a little higher on Leggett perhaps. But Ravens, you know, with their, their unique play style, a lot of – just physical, like so. Give him the ball underneath, let him go to work. I could see that. The Lions like the like the dudes, you know. They like those types of guys. And there's a guy that can play outside. They're kind of looking for that. They have the the straight line speed guy on the outside, Jamison Williams. So they need a kind of a more physical guy out there. St. Brown's an all you know all pro slot receiver, maybe the best in football in that category. Uh, Bills, yeah, have some physicality for the outside. Um, and if the this is kind of a good Rasheed Rice uh, option replacement, if you know, they're a little worried about that, the Chiefs that is. So, really good after the catch. Uh, Rice was really good after the catch this year. Leggett as a prospect. Like, Rice after the catch as a prospect. Leggett after the catch as a prospect. Leggett's better, you know. But, I guess a little bit more to Rice's game, perhaps. So, uh, this is a pretty good one. I think more likely than... More likely than Keon Coleman, for sure. Looking at the other receivers. Uh, Roman, Wilson, and Troy Franklin. It's kind of a battle there. Um... I'd probably put him second, most likely, after Franklin. That's really not my receiver rankings, but um, it's kind of my feeling right now. Uh, and then, talk about some more guys. There's another slide after that. I mean, this would be, these are guys that are super, like, everybody would be like, what? But I kind of, I can make a case, not that they should be first-round picks, but that, like, we could see it. And one that stands out is Malachi Corley. And I would not take him in the first. Uh, I wish he had a little bit more to his game. A lot of everything, you know, a lot of it was kind of, schemed up underneath I mean so many damn screen passes so many screen passes really good at those though really really good after the catch really athletic he has upside doing everything else so maybe you could develop him to something kind of gets comparisons to Debo I mean Debo did that I did it at a higher level in college and that was while playing much much better competition so hard to have that full line comparison but there's probably some teams that are just so wowed by his physicality is after after a catch ability on his athleticism, like, this guy is a legit weapon. Like, you know there's going to be teams that, in this draft for Malachi Corley, like, we have to have this guy. I'm like an offense coordinator. going to be like, I just have to get my hands on him. We're going to have so much fun. We're going to add a little bit more to our playbook with a guy like this. So, he has that uniqueness that is why I put him up here. I just think it would be a big-time reach. But, I could, you know, Ravens or Chiefs, you kind of can see it. You know, maybe. Uh, more likely in the second, though. Junior Colson, which... 
Uh, a lot of people's linebacker one. I heard a lot of teams have a linebacker one great on him. So some teams have need of linebackers. Um, put Edger and Cooper. Um, we have Edger and Cooper on the next slide, actually. Um, it's a little bit more realistic because he has, like, wild, flashy ability. But, you know, Colson yeah, doesn't really – he's really solid. He's really good with his reads. He kind of – he's the guy that gets the job done, you know. He just doesn't have that for, for a linebacker, a non-premium position. Like, you want those guys to, like, wow. Like, be like Fred Warner, wow, like, super flashy, and he didn't even go near the first round. Um, you know, so it, it's tough to take him in the first. But based on what we're hearing lately leading up to the draft, a lot of people like Colson. Who would do it, though? And the Eagles need a linebacker, but they're not going to do it up there at 22, uh, especially with their philosophy on linebackers. Uh, Packers, maybe, you know, our linebacker. Christian Haynes from UConn's another one. I like Christian Haynes. I mean, you, you look you, you look at him and you kind of you would what do you think about Christian Haynes? Like big, big physical blocker with good experience at right guard. Um, uh, but he is really good in outside zone, which is actually not a long list of like polished outside and outside zone blockers in this draft, even though there's a lot of good blockers in this draft. Uh, and there's a lot of NFL teams that run that, obviously. And I like his blocks next level, like downfield and um, showing off some quickness. So uh, there's going to be teams that like that a lot. Like, be really going to fit with the 49ers down there at 31. I, I actually could see it. I almost put him in, like, the main category of this video. Um, see him fitting with the Packers. Do they take him there, though? Uh, then Zach Frazier would be early because how, how early do you take a center? So it would be pretty damn surprising. Um, but... Yeah, if you badly need a center, center and you got you have a flashy guy here, physical, especially in the run game, um, it's a possibility. I'm just really not seeing it. Tyler Newbin at one point was considered a first round prospect, uh, but then yeah, not the most athletic guy. You know, he's a free safety. What you wish he was a little faster, you know, and more explosive at his pro day, perhaps. And he is and the main thing though. It's not actually that he's pretty scheme dependent, which is okay. Like he's really good at his job like a zone coverage free safety, I think would really would be at his best in a cover four scheme. Um, but yeah, so it kind of eliminates the, the teams not looking for a free safety, the teams, you know, that really run a lot of man coverage or teams maybe not really sold on him being a single high type guy. So it, I think the teams that would draft them all together, it's a really good player, but that would draft them all together. Isn't, a super super long list so those teams know they probably can wait for him so he is no longer in that first round conversation i think more so because of that but i mean if he did run like four fours i think he'd be in the first round because somebody would have to have him at because he fits what they do really well but um yeah so that'd be a bit of a surprise but who knows um but really all these guys are really good players and adisa isaac from penn state explosive scheme versatile more productive in terms of sacks than chop robinson um, really looks the part too. Um, we know where people value the edge rush position, so it'd be pretty, no one's mocked him in the first. It'd be very, very surprising. Not really a huge name, but he could be the best of the second round guys, perhaps. Um, but give it a small percentage chance. So these guys kind of got all these guys got some unique talent or unique level to them. Where again, I could see a, a small percentage here. And here's some guys that I, I think would surprise some people. Not a lot of people. I think most people watching me, watching this video right now, probably wouldn't be surprised by any of these guys. But I think some people, uh, these aren't your household first round mock draft guys. Like they're sprinkled in, maybe a little more than sprinkled in in the late first here and there. But Darius Robinson's a first round player with his power, his length, his versatility. People mock him in the first, especially after the senior bowl. So I think it would surprise some people because some people are like, yeah, you do worry about the closing speed. It's definitely an issue. Jordan Morgan, uh, talented pass protector, very athletic for a tackle. Um, play strength and lack of length, you know, has some people saying he's not a first round player, so it would surprise some. Xavier Worthy with his speed and big playability, um, you know, wouldn't surprise us in the first, you know, fastest guy in combine history. But some people are like, yeah, you wish he was, a, you know, ran more routes, you know, more polished NFL routes, your bigger route tree. Um, you know, wish he caught the ball a little bit better. So maybe some people would be surprised. Edger and Cooper has been mocked in the first a little bit. Super flashy, good against the pass, run, getting after the quarterback. So you kind of can see it. Um, and then it's Rakestraw, right? Another Missouri player here. So Rakestraw is a first round player if there was no durability concerns, really. Um, because he's, he's solid in zone. I think better in zone than man, but solid in man. He's 
physical as shit. He'll get downhill, hit you. Um, sticky in coverage. He's really solid. Uh, but because of his play style and because of multiple uh, recent injuries, you know, couldn't play in the senior bowl because of that. Um, you know, missed some time during his career in Missouri. I think that it, it makes it a really risky pick in the first. But the talent has him being mocked late one. Um, you know, so it wouldn't be completely shocking. And those other quarterbacks, I, I think they'll go round two. There's some people that are like, Penix is going one. There's some people that are like, Bo Nix is going to the Broncos. So some people, like, it wouldn't shock them at all. Like, they're firmly, like, those guys are going first round. So I, I think those people need to pump the brakes a little bit. They could end up right. You know, maybe a little bit too sure about it, though. Uh, I think these guys go second. I think the best chance for them to go first, one of them, is if the Vikings are past the, like, they picked at 11, they didn't take quarterback yet. Uh, then they're going to take one of these guys at 23. And there's been a lot of buzz about Penix. I would actually think maybe Nix would be their pick, though. Uh, but I think these are second-round guys with some talent, with some good play. Um, and there's there's moments in their game where like that. That's first round, especially Penix. I feel like the first-round talented guy. But uh, I think, yeah, I think it's kind of mixed. People are like, those guys are going first. And some people are like, they're, they're, they're going second. So it would surprise some people there. Um so, yeah, the Vikings, I guess, are the team to watch for with those guys. Rakestraw, I, I would say uh, the Lions stand out. Niners, maybe. Edgerin Cooper, the Packers. Xavier Worthy. I like the fit with the Jags. That's, a, that's early. It's like the fit. Um, but the yeah, Chiefs, Ravens, Bills, perhaps. Uh, Jordan Morgan, I like with the Chiefs. I like with the Chiefs a lot. Um there, there's some other teams that mm, I'm trying to think. I don't know if the Ravens would do it. They need an offensive lineman. It just doesn't really seem like a great fit. Uh, there's a few other teams back there. Really got to think about it. But yeah, I think he can go late first. Darius Robinson, uh, Niners and Lions. It's funny because I mentioned Niners and Lions for the, for the other Missouri guy who's a different position as well. So, uh, but that's kind of where I'm feeling with, with guys like that. Robinson. I think he's a good one for this video because I don't think it would surprise a lot if he went first at all. That's why he's on this list. But that's actually a guy that could go a lot earlier than you think. Like, it wouldn't actually shock me if he went, like, way earlier than he's being mocked. Like, the middle of the first. Because there's a lot to like about him. Like, like he's got some dominant, dominant moments. And it's a guy you just really want to work with. So, I can see that from teams. And everyone loves the length, you know. He's got that length. Uh, but that'll wrap it up for this video. Re I really enjoy this video do it every year. I think we kind of upgraded how the video, the format of the video was this year too. Uh, let me know your thoughts. If you have any other players that you want to mention that I did not mention in the comments or on Twitter, we're always talking to you guys. Love to see it. You know, uh, check out our sponsors, GLD shop, liquid IV code goat for a percentage off. Very important to turn notifications on here. And then to follow us on Twitter with notifications too at this time of the year. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.